Okay, we are back at it. I'm gonna do a little Q&A at the end, but I think this is gonna be uh, pretty valuable. A lot of people have been asking for this. I'll wait till a couple more people are in the room, and then we'll talk about this topic, but obviously if you're just joining, you know what the topic is. We're going to be showing you the beginning stages of teaching an out, off, leave it. There's, there's a, a couple of uh, opinions that I have about certain commands that I'm gonna explain that. What's going on, everybody? Um, and then we're gonna show you working him for the first time and kind of the process of what we're looking for. So this is, I, I, for me, very important that we kind of go about it this way. Does this work on human children? It does. Uh, this stuff all does. The logic and concepts are the same. Okay, yeah, actually, so drop it. it, it it's the same thing, right? Um, out, drop it, but there's a couple things that are important. Now, I don't use the word leave it. There's a reason why I don't use the word leave it. Um, I have no problem with the word itself. However, I have an issue with the way majority of people and even trainers tend to use the word leave it. Now this is not everybody, it doesn't group everybody into the same kind of category, but more often than not, what I see on the streets are owners or trainers that have a dog and every five to 10 seconds, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, is kind of being used. Now, the way I kind of equate, or what I equate that to, is it's no different than if I had a friend that was a professional boxer, and we went out one night, and as we're walking to our destination, every single time we walk by a person, I go, don't hit him, don't hit him, don't hit him, don't hit him. It becomes repetitive and it becomes ridiculous because we don't, we're just getting started, uh, Lisa, because it's something that my friend should know. You're a professional boxer, yes, but if we're walking by people, I shouldn't have to tell you, don't hit him, don't hit him, don't hit him, every, every person we walk by, it should be known, right? I have an issue with the leave it command because that's usually how it's being used. So what happens is in the dog's mind, the dog is like, he just said, leave it. I'm gonna bump into you one day when he doesn't say leave it and it's on. Or like, you know what I mean? If, if it's that, or it's like, oh, well you're saying leave it. So the day, when the day comes that you don't say leave it, I, I can go after that barbecue skewer with a chicken on it and injure myself. Um, these are things that we have to teach that are different. So I don't have a problem with the word leave it. I have a problem with how leave it is used. For that in general, we just don't teach a leave it, right? Um, we tend to use the word out, and there's a couple of things that we're looking for first. We are looking for a dog that is, I guess the word's proficient, smooth on leash pressure. It is a must. A dog must understand the concept of leash pressure. The owner must understand that too before they start working on this. Pressure on, pressure off concept. It is ideal if you have a dog that understands remote collar and can do a couple of things first meaning they know what to do way before you're asking them to do this kind of new thing, which is calling them off of something else. I want my dog to be good at recall, or any dog. I want the dog to be able to feel remote pressure or leash pressure and turn and come in my direction. I want that pretty good and I want to reward that, right? So those are things that we need to have in place. I don't like teaching an out. I've done it before, you can do it. There's nothing wrong, this is just what I prefer. I, I, I feel that you lower the risk of, of creating a very stressed, unsure, like what the hell is this guy asking for um, type of dog if you have these things set in place. You can totally teach out or leave it prior to this, but this is just kind of the way I have my trainers and, and, and my staff kind of go about this. So I'm gonna hand the camera over to Ozzy. Um, I'll do a little Q&A after for this, but a lot of you guys have been asking for this, so we're gonna jump right into this things that we have going on. Um, Soli just finished working for her food. She's hanging. Jerry just finished, uh, we just did a periscope with him. He's hanging. They're going to be working on their place command. I'm going to be working on this guy. Soko's here also. He's just chilling. I was going to pass this off. So, a couple things. I must know that I have a dog. A couple things. You can see he's not even expecting anything right now. Let's tune over to him real quick. He's just kind of chilling out. I want a dog that knows recall. 
away from being called off of something. I want a long line the first couple times because I'm going to be experimenting with using a higher level most, most likely and I want that leash and remote to kind of make sense to the dog where they get called off and they come to me. When they make the choice that they might not be aware of, I'm going to reward the heck out of it and I'm going to give them something of higher value. So I actually have his food and I have freeze dried uh, beef liver. We're not going to use the beef liver just yet. I'm going to explain when I do it. Once we get to the point where food is on that placement and he's eating for it, I'm going to call him off of that and I'm going to reward. So the dog becomes happy to make the choice. I know you guys are, some of you in the beginning are going to be like, well, that's not an off, but these are the stages that we use. So in the very beginning, I want a dog that knows those things. I want a dog that can be eating food. I want a dog that I can call off recall and come to me and then eventually I'm going to transfer remote and recall which means follow the direction that I'm giving you which means come off of the food into if the dog is facing this way and the dog is eating and I say O-U-T with remote and leash pressure going this way really quickly the dog will be eating get called off with the remote and then I will get excited, reward the dog, and feed the dog something of higher value. The dog goes, holy cow, that's what that means? Next time you hit me with one of those, and I hear that word, I know exactly what I'm gonna do because that's good stuff. That's like crack. I'm eating, I'm eating, I'm eating. You hear the word out, paired with the golden leash. The dog happily does this and sits, and he gets something better, so you get a dog enthusiastic about making the choice. For me, that's a big deal. I want to see dogs that are, are kind of eager to do stuff because they see how it, how it benefits them versus just flat out forcing a dog to do it. I can do that, but it's, it, it's, it's just not necessary, right? So, you can see he's passed out, sort of, just kind of chilling out. I'm going to jump right into calling him right now. And oh, here, good boy. So I need to know that I have recall to an extent like this, which is really good. I have eye contact, yes really good, we're gonna work him, do a couple things with him, get him into a nice rhythm, and then we'll jump into that kind of toward the end. Oh, what's up, buddy? Echo, sit. Good, down. Good, place. Yes. Good boy, so good. So good, very nice. Echo, place. Good. See the difference in the good? It means hold your position. I love what you're doing, keep it up. You're one step closer to getting your yes. If this is a new behavior, I can feed for this. I'm okay with that, he's still a new dog. Down. If this is not a new behavior and good is a conditioned response, I do not have to feed. So I'll show you this in a bit. Echo here, good boy. Down. That's a hard one. Sit. <laughs> That's okay, good. Echo, please. Good boy, yes. Good job. Echo, please. Good boy. Nope. Good. Yes. Good job. So we have a dog that knows this, right? And it's pretty, it's pretty obvious. Um, down. Good boy. Our first recall, he wasn't expecting it. Our second recall is having him change directions. Echo here. Good boy. I don't like that. I don't care too much about position right now. That's okay. Good job, bud. Yes. Very nice. Now what we're going to do, sit. Down. Good. Is we're going to experiment with what I was talking about. I need these things in place. I need not only him to be good on this, I need him to be even better on the leash. Important, right? Now I'm going to drop this food. I want there to be enough that he cannot finish I'm using something that he cannot take with him. If he has a ball and, and it's in his mouth and he's really gripping it, teach it out with something that he can hold on to or take with him, it, you, it can work, but you're running a risk. Here, he's eating, he's eating, he wants it all, and he has to stop when he's doing to come over. These are the first steps for me with how I like to teach it. There are other ways, I'm not disputing that, right? So I'm going to pick up just some of the food that's on the floor here. When I do this for the first time, the remote collar level is not going to be on correction level. It is likely going to be a little bit higher than what we're doing here. 
or I can keep the level the same and use a little bit more leash. I like to go, if I'm on a five now, I might go to like maybe an eight and just tap that. So in the middle of them eating, because his nose is gonna be driven more, there are studies that show a dog is using a large percent of their brain more than when they're using their eyes or their ears when they're doing something. The nose is in the middle of doing that. It's gonna to be tougher when they're in the middle of doing something to, to call them off. It, it's, it's, you're adding something to what is a relatively sterile environment. So this, this needs to be known, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have freeze-dried beef liver on me when I teach this, right? So I go, yes, I'm gonna let him eat his food. Echo here, good boy, oh, so good. Focus, I get focus. Nope. Haven't gotten it yet. Yes. Very nice. Nope. Good. I didn't use your collar there, but I should have. That's not the point. This is not shocking dogs into compliance. It's just helping them, right? Because eventually I want to get off leash. Eventually I want to get off of this stuff too, but there's a process to that, right? So now we're going to go ahead and do it again. See, there's plenty of food, so I have time. Echo here, good boy, so good. Yes. The next step, yeah. Same thing, I must have the leash. I'm going to call the dog off this way as I step in. There's a couple of components that need to be understood and known here. I need a dog, again, to be good on leash pressure. I need a dog to be good on this, which we've already, we've already shown. Whether I mean, you guys were, were um, seeing this and you guys were in live, I've been doing this anyway. This is the first time that we're doing this with him. Andrew might have worked on it with him. Did he say this morning? I don't, I don't remember, but, um, but I haven't done it, so I, I, I don't know where he is with this, so this is what I'm doing, right? Um, when we do this next step, I'm introducing something also that a dog should know prior. There are different stages. If you have a dog that is possessive and will attack you, you want certain things in, in place, and, and you might be a little bit harsher in some situations or firmer, but for here, I need a dog that knows how to get on place, and if they were going to break off with a note, which is my marker, remote leash and spatial pressure, I can get a dog to go from this to hearing no, and as I move into them, they make this choice. When this choice is made, leash pressure, remote pressure, and spatial pressure, imagine that I have a pole that's attached to the dog. Once I see him back up, his choice relieved everything, including my body language and my spatial pressure. A lot of people are really bad with spatial pressure, right? So that's super, super important. Um, you're getting better at it though. Ozzy raised his hand in the background. Um, so actually you're pretty good at it, but you're, you're, you're more assertive, which can be tough on, on some soldier dogs. I went through that too, right? And it's, and everybody falls on, on far sides of the spectrum and they kind of work their way uh, to everything. So that's important. I have that, I know I have it. That's how we teach place, right? So, the next step is doing the same thing, but taking that spatial pressure concept and moving him away rather than on place. So all of these things are, are broken up, where when you're asking for something, the dog actually knows how to do it, he just might not know how to do it in this context. That's how we're teaching the command. Another thing with all of our commands, we do not name it until we love it. Meaning, I like what I'm seeing. If I can get the behavior, get the behavior, get the behavior, then I'm gonna add a name to what that behavior is. I'm never gonna name something that a dog is not doing or I don't think I can kind of do smoothly. It, it just, again, you can probably do it, but you're gonna run into becoming a, a repeater. I don't like repeating commands. I want it to kind of happen. I know if I say something, I can get it to happen. So eventually when I say the dog goes, you don't need to do the rest, I know what it means, they do it on their own, right? So, Different stages, right? I'll do a QA toward the end, alright? So now the next step is going to be I might pick up the leash here, I might walk him over, I have to have a little bit of a shorter leash, I'm not gonna be all the way up here. Does it make sense, right? Yes. I'm gonna give him his food, let him eat, let him eat, let him eat, let him eat. 
he felt a little leash pressure, you see, there wasn't that much there. But yes, let him eat, let him eat, right here. Good boy, so good. Good job, very nice. I know I can get the behavior, I'm gonna speed this process up a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna use the word O-U-T, right? Yes. The word is gonna come first. Out! Good boy! So good. So good. That was really soft, and that's a feel thing. I don't know how to explain it. I'm willing to bet that I probably don't need the leash, but I'm gonna have it in my hand just in case. Yes. Out! Good boy! So good! So in the beginning, the dog is gonna be unsure. Oh, is that okay? I'm also gonna lower remote, so his normal working level was a five. I was using a 10 minute. I'm gonna go down to an eight, and I'm gonna try this only one more time. You cannot overdo this. Yes. Assum assumed, right? I don't want him to assume, I want him he, but you can tell he offered up the behavior on his own. He's like, hey man, I want some of that good stuff again. Yes, so I'm going to reward that choice. Oh, good job, buddy. Good job. That was a little high. Even though, oh, actually I dialed up a little bit. So I want to do it again on the eight. This is the last time I'm going to do it. That was my mistake. I went up to a 22 or 23. So that's why you saw kind of like a pop. Again, not the end of the world. If you guys have felt it, the dog is fine. You can say he wants to work. This is going to be the last time that I teach him. Yes! So good, but he might not want to do it this time. I have to be aware of this. I cannot overdo the behavior. You can finish. Come on, buddy. Come on. Finish it, Good boy. I'm going to throw more on there for him. Good job. Now I am on an eight. Out. Good job. And I'm going to let him finish. I'm done with my session. That is it, right? So it wasn't ideal that I went a little bit higher there, but it ain't the end of the world. Do not overkill this. I usually like to do this two, three times. You just did it with Soli. I did it twice and I said, don't do it again, right? Yeah. Was it three or was it two? It was three times. It was three times, okay. I usually don't go more than that. That was four because I didn't want to end on that high pop note. I don't want a dog to be afraid to eat. Right? But I also have to know my dog. This is a very driven, enthusiastic dog. The dog is familiar with everything. everything. So if they get a remote collar bump, it's not the end of the world. So like, oh, you use that anyway. Okay, and can I eat now? What can I do? If I have a dog that's a little bit nervous, I might get them better with everything else. Or I might do that once, and then that's it, and we move on. Right? You have to know your dog. Very, very important. So this guy was a rock star. I'm gonna see if he wants some water. Come on, mate. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Water. Good boy. And then I'm gonna place him over there and I'll do a little QA. I'm gonna wash my hands and I'll do a QA. Right. Place. Good. Down. Whoop. Pressing the wrong button. So, yeah, there it is. You can show that. Wash my hands really, really quickly, and then we'll do the Q&A. So get your questions ready, it's very, very important. I know I've archived that, I did it with a couple of dogs, where it's more the energy switch. Once a dog knows how to out, who was it? Kino. Kino? Yeah, Kino. Oh, a Kino. Once a dog knows how to out, then all you're doing is the same thing for the ball, but your energy has to switch also. It can't just be you're trying to tell your dog out as you're trying to pull it, or you're trying to tell your dog out as he's still tugging. You have to kind of almost go go like limp you know what i mean and that's hard i'll do it i'll we'll we'll work with him so we can get him kind of to the point where you guys can see how he progressed but that's how he how you start you need all the other things in place first 
So if you guys have questions, happy to take them. I don't see many people harding, guys. What's going on here? Please, come on. All this information, you guys asked. This is a special request, and I don't see. There we go. Now we're seeing hearts. I don't understand them. I don't understand them. Doesn't make any sense to me. Um, why don't you bring Jerry and Echo down? And then um, we'll leave Soli here, because when you're done, you can go take her to see if she's going to pee. And then we'll get out uh, the other guys. You're harding. Thank you, Jackie Butler. I love you for it. You know that. You know that. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. If you guys have questions, now's the time to ask. My battery's running low again. I charge it up just for you. Sure, you can do it without the, the e-collar, of course. Um, I mean, you're basically, you're teaching all the behaviors without the e-collar. It, it's just once the e-collar is known, it's like you can totally use it. So I was taught how to drive without four-wheel drive. I drove a car in the snow without four-wheel drive. But now that I have it in my Jeep Sahara, if it's like snowing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw, it, throw it in, you know what I mean? Because I know how to use it. So um, that's, that's pretty much it. It can be taught, but you do run into a little bit of a risk um, when you get to the stages that you're not using a, a leash anymore. And for me, that's a big issue when you're playing a guessing game. And, and, and at some point, a dog tests. Um, no, 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 Echo's not up for adoption. He has an owner. He's here for our board and train program. Um, none of the dogs that we work with are, are up for adoption. We, um, we work with them. That must be the owner right there. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Good. So that's it. No questions. You guys are just loving this stuff, right? Keep harding. Keep harding. Should I dial up the e-collar to stop my dogs over interested on my cat? Well, Smeeji, does your dog know the e-collar? If your dog doesn't know the e-collar, no way, no way, no way, no way, right? Um, these are things you have to teach first. Well, the thing is, here, here's the thing, e-collar by itself, I'm gonna go ahead and say no. You're watching from Peru, that's, that's awesome. That's pretty rad, Wilson. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Seeing everybody chiming in, tuning in from all over the world is just like, I'm, I'm always in awe and I'm forever humble and grateful that uh, people care enough. Um, he's been working on e-collar with commands, fantastic. You do not want to just dial up on a remote without having something clear that the remote is following. If your dog really knows it well, body language paired with remote makes sense. You want to pair that remote with something. Body language paired dialing up with leash could make sense. All of those things, but if you don't have that stuff, um, then, then you, you don't want to do that first. So make sure you have those other tools. Like you'll see, for example, when we taught that recall off of food, I picked the leash back up because I knew it was going to be a higher level. If I'm going to experiment with a higher level, I want to make sure that I can show the dog what to do, right? Which is very important. No, show the dog what to do instead. You're, you're not trying to scare the dog. You're, you're trying to show them what to do. So if it interrupts them and gets them back on track, beautiful. But if it flat out shuts the dog down, then I would say no. Um, leash, probably. Leash, probably. But you, you see how I use, like, I didn't use a pet convincer to teach out there. I don't want my dog to not want to play or not want to eat after. I want, I want the dog, I use the leash pressure to kind of help because I was dialing up. And I say, hey, when, when that feels a little bit more, when I'm raising my voice with the remote, that's all you have to do. Come this way to shut it off. Rather than me saying, ah, I think the dog might make the right choice, but if I do, the dog freaks out and does something else or eats faster or runs and takes off, I want to be able to help the dog learn what to do, right? I don't want them to have a thousand options and figure it out and hope that they make the right one. Does that make sense? All right. What other questions do we have, guys? Awesome. Newport, I'm jealous. Lead and love canine. Hey, lead and love canine. Um, what's, what's your name? Practice recall with car around? Well, yeah, sure, you could. You could. Maggie, oh, okay. Foot, Maggie Footrin? F-O-O-T-R-A-N? Is that, is that it? Could be. Oh, with a cat? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yes, now, Smeeji, you're talking. You're, you see, I, 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 follow, I follow people that follow me. I'm, I'm aware of that stuff. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for watching on Periscope, too. I see you on Facebook, and I think on, think on Instagram, too. Um... Yes, Smeeji, yes, practicing recall from a distance. Don't try to recall your dog while they're right on the cat, right? Hold on one sec. Hey, no. Um, so things like that. Now you're thinking you might want to, down. Nope. 
down. Good. So solely a little bit of anxiety. I kind of interrupted that while she was concerned with Ozzy, and that's what we're working on with Soli. We're also going to be teaching Soli the same thing because Soli is extremely possessive. So we need recall really good. I appreciate it, um, uh, Linda. I really do. I, I've, you know, you've known me, and, and I think you've seen my growth, or at least my attempted growth over the last year. So I, that I really means a lot coming from you. Thank you so much. Um, so, so we're going to be working with Soli because Soli's owner is is very is very uh, uh, elderly now. Um, she has Alzheimer's, um, and, and her caretakers and, and the dog walkers that help them, she gets, she gets very possessive of the owner and, and won't let them near her. And we don't, we don't want to have to continue bothering the owner um, in order to get the dog on a leash. So we're going to get recall really good. Remote collar, we're going to get impulse control in place really good. And then we're going to get out command and off command really good as well. So that's going to be very important for Soli. Um, but that's the process, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And it uh, doesn't seem like we have many more questions. So thank you so much, as always, for watching. I'll see you guys on the next scope. If I can figure out how to shut this off. There we go.